is ministered, uh, it's through intinction and that the body and blood, uh, all the, uh, the body, which is leavened bread, made, cut into cubes, kind of like sugar cubes if you look at it closely, will be put into, by the deacon, will put that into uh, the chalice with the precious blood. Uh, and there's actually some warm water that's poured in there, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the life of the Holy Spirit being put into the uh, chalice. So even though the precious blood is slightly warm, which gives a sign of life as well. Uh, and then using a spoon, it's then transferred. Uh, the words, a servant of God, partake of the body and blood of Christ for the remission of sins and life everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Count of mercy, be most worthy of compassion. Look upon a sinful people, and as always, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The Lord reigns, he is clothed in majesty, robed in glory, and girded about with strength. The word he made firm not to be moved. Our scripture of the Lord, Reverend Paul, the best in answers. We offer incense to you, O Christ our God, as an aroma of spiritual fragrance. Oh, let us be attentive. The Lord told his parable a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that is coming to me. Offer ourselves to him asking for forgiveness because he wants to receive us. He's waiting for us with arms open. He wants to return us to his grace so that we can be with him in heaven. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, the entire priestly diaconal monastic order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was departed from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and he became man, a road to the fear of God and with faith. Maybe the mystery, the iconist iconostasis, which is kind of like separating one from there. So there is a little bit more of the mystery. There's more, more of the incense, the bells. There's different symbolic actions that just there's a reason behind them all. But it just, there very much is more of a mystery kind of that is portrayed. Like we don't necessarily understand everything that's happening. We're able maybe always to see everything that's happening. But that's part of it. The fact that, no, God is kind of beyond that. When we pray, we pray for the visible and invisible, those knowable realities and the unknowable ones. So the transcendent and the manifest. And I think that this rite uh, does a very good job of bringing that out. Not that ours don't, it's just, I think, just slightly different emphasis on what we're trying to do. Sure. If I do some explaining, I, most people, most Roman Catholics have never heard or, or aren't aware of it. Um, uh, but so it's, it's a little bit of a shock for them, a surprise. I brought one or two that I know of that were, were fairly close friends I brought them here. And they really enjoy the liturgy. Oh man, everything. Uh, I, I've always been very attached to the traditions of the East. Um, so much so that we even explored uh, Eastern Orthodoxy for quite some time. Um, so when we found out about St. Nicholas, it was a godsend really. Um, because uh, we weren't willing to compromise on Catholic unity. Um, despite our Eastern, you know, um, leanings and attitudes. So when I found this church, it was really like a spiritual homecoming, I guess you'd say. I like that the worship really involves the senses. Um, it's a lot of participation, um, you know, the incense, the smells and bells, as the often said, you know. Um, but also um, on a theological level, the patristic theology, you know, the theology of the fathers from St. John Chrysostom, St. Basil the Great, uh, St. Gregory, um, you know, is very rooted in the ancient traditions of the early church. There is a sense of the mystical, and there is a sense of um, true worship. Yeah, anyone is welcome to come, especially those who are have some sort of an Eastern Rite background, uh, that we are here to serve any of them. Uh, we're not trying to say don't go to a Roman Catholic parish at all, I'm by ritual. It's much more just say if you want to experience, you know, the culture that your family is from, to come here, join, come back and forth. We have people who visit maybe once a month. Sure, and we're open to, to everybody. Roman Catholics, Orthodox, they can all come. We're a growing church. We're, we're a, uh, a suffering church, you know. 
we live from week to week. Roman Catholic and you just want to experience uh, something that's a little bit different than the regular uh, Latin Rite parishes that we have, which are fine, uh, it'll give you a new experience and maybe be able to just connect you maybe to the mystery uh, that is a liturgy in just a slightly different way. It may be an experience that is beneficial and helpful for you.